2017 public council meeting. A roll call, please. Councilman Kambiris? Here. Councilwoman Peterson? Here. Councilman Vargo? Here. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Here. Mayor Tanella? Here. Please rise for a flag salute. Adequate notice of this meeting was duly provided to the Verona Cedar Grove Times in the Star Ledger by email and published in the annual schedule of meetings uh, December 29, 2016 and January 6, 2017 and respectfully filed with the Township Clerk and posted on the public bulletin board in the Municipal Building Lobby in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act. Uh, item 2, Extraordinary Business of the uh, Township Council. Rec uh, item A, Recognition of Extraordinary Action of First Responders and Citizens. First, I want to welcome everybody here tonight to our meeting. Uh, I heard the manager say earlier that uh, tonight is what we call a feel-good meeting. It, it really is. It's a, it's a time, especially in today's society, when you hear so many negative things going on, that we as a council get to recognize, you know, Cedar Grove's finest and uh, for doing their job and going really above and beyond the call of duty. Um, so I'm going to recognize several of our officers who are here in attendance tonight. But before I do, I want to... I want to tell what happened on the two uh, days in question, or at, uh, the, the two days that at issue, um, so you understand what they did and how they went above and beyond the call of duty. On uh, Saturday, July 22nd, 2017, at uh, 17.55 hours, Cedar Grove Police Department responded to the scene of a drowning. Tragically, a five-year-old child had been found at the bottom of a swimming pool in the rear yard of the township residence. Family members had removed the child from the pool and called 911. The child was blue, unresponsive, and not breathing. Due to the location of the residence, the 911 call went to the Passaic County Sheriff's Department. Public safety telecommunicator Lorraine Bucaria, answering the call, gathered the required information, provided pre-arrival instructions, and transferred the call without delay. Further, she remained on the call assisting the Cedar Grove desk officer. Officer Samilski was the first officer to arrive. While still alone, he prepared the victim for defibrillation and simultaneously performing chest compressions. Officer Samilski initiated back blows, cleared the airway, and the child began to breathe and his color returned. The Cedar Grove ambulance arrived and took over patient care. The child was transported to a nearby trauma center and was discharged from the hospital and completely recovered. As a result of you know, that incident, uh, we want to recognize um, Cedar Grove Police Officer John Samelski and Cedar Grove, our Cedar Grove Ambulance and Rescue Squad and Passaic County Sheriff's Department Public Safety Telecommuter, Telecommunicator Lorraine Bucaria and our Passaic County Sheriff's Department uh, Under Sheriff I think, uh, Dennis, who is here tonight to accept. So if those individuals would come forward, please, I'd appreciate it. And so I'd like you just to welcome me and uh, just offer you know, a round of applause for what they did. We have some certificates of recognition. I just want to, you can join me in a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I have one other, uh, one other one we'd like to, to provide as well. On, on Tuesday, August 15, 2017, at 4.46 p.m., fire and EMS responded to the scene of a motor vehicle crash at the intersection of Pompton Avenue and Myrtle Avenue. Upon arrival, 
police found one of the vehicles off the roadway. The operator was being pulled from his car by Mr. McHugh. He was not breathing and in cardiac arrest. Officer Semelski, Ligas, and Lieutenant Kennedy arrived and immediately initiated CPR and AED protocols. Shocks were provided. Cedar Grove Ambulance and Rescue Squad personnel arrived. Patient care was turned over to Cedar Grove Ambulance and Rescue Squad, and the victim was subsequently transferred to Mountainside Hospital. While en route, the ambulance personnel were able to regain the patient's pulse and breathing. The victim was later released from the hospital and expected to make a full recovery. I'd also like to um, invite up here Lieutenant John Kennedy, Patrolman Joseph Ligas, and uh, Benjamin McHugh, if you join me, please. You know, I, I just say when, when this, when we were told of both of these incidents over the summertime, you know, it, 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 it made me remember personally, I, I've had um, several occasions where we've had to call the police to our home with young children and a family. And, it, and I had said this to the manager, I couldn't get over the, the response time that they were at our house and then the response time of the Cedar Grove Ambulance and Rescue Squad. I, if it was over two minutes, it was, it, I was, no, too much, you know, it was a lot of time. By the time we picked up the phone to call 911 and we finished telling them what the issue was, someone was knocking at our door. It took over complete control. And it's that comfort level that we have um, with our officers in town and obviously you know, our, our, you know, our, our county officers and the level of law, enfor law enforcement training that we're so fortunate to have here in Cedar Grove. So again, I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for what you do for our town and keeping us safe. Thank you. So moving on with the agenda, again, it's a feel-good night. Um, I would like to in, in, you know, um, invite up here uh, Gina Pernicola from the Susie G. Komen Foundation. How are you, Gina? Good to see you. Um, many, as many of you know, we recently held here in Cedar Grove, I think it was, uh, what was it, Dave Marisa? No, uh, October 19th, the Thursday evening, heard our, uh, held our third annual uh, walk, uh, no, run, marathon, and um, it was each year it seemed to get better and better. Uh, the weather this time around was so, um, you know, uh, so good. Uh, it, was, it was beautiful out, and I think we had over 400 participants. I know I saw Councilwoman, Councilwoman Peterson down there with a crew of uh, uh, people walking. Uh, I was able to get down there and uh, see, what was, see, see everybody and then um, welcome everybody. Uh, it was just a really great experience and I think as I know, I, I hope, I think the council hopes each year it's going to, going to continue to improve. Uh, and not only do we have a lot of participants who are actually at the event, but we also were able to raise uh, over $6,000 and we're honored to have a check tonight to present to the Susan G. Coleman Foundation to check for $6,711 uh, as a result of you know, uh, our community coming together for this important cause. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Um, Marisa, Nancy, Mayor Tanella, members of the board, Township of Cedar Grove, I just want to thank you all for all of your continued support. Susan G. Coleman, North Jersey, serves the nine northern counties of New Jersey. Last year was actually our 20th anniversary. Um, and in those 20 years, we've been able to support over $18 million back in local community grants to support education, um, survivorship programs, financial assistance, diagnostic testing, um, and that's all because of you. The other $7 million went to support global research initiatives of international office. So. All of these fundraisers mean so much to us and really help us further our mission to end breast cancer forever. Just the number of, just to get a number, how many folks here in the room have been affected by breast cancer? Want family members, friends? Yep. It affects way too close to home to too many people. So 
um, with your help and your continued support, hopefully one day we find the cure. So I just can't thank you enough and just appreciate all everything you continue to do. Thank you. Looks like that, um, our rec director, Marisa Landolfi, if you come up for a second, and Nancy Walsh, you come up. The, this, this, this event does not take, as many of you know, none of these events take place without planning or organization, and it, this event definitely does not take place without these two uh, women uh, and their help and their organization. So I want to thank them for what they do. I see why. Great. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. Great. All right. Here. And the last item, but not the least item on our, our no good agenda, is the presentation of your Recreation Advisory Board Awards. Now, we've been, at, each year, uh, the board uh, convenes to select two individuals who've really made an impact uh, on, a on, on our, our community. And this year, um, this year the, the board had selected uh, Maria Adubato and John Castiglione. And I, I definitely, I, I can't think of two better people uh, to select, to recognize. Um, both of these individuals have spent countless, countless hours volunteering their time uh, to our community. You know, I, I have three daughters, so I'm not involved in the uh, junior baseball league as much. So I don't see John as round as much as I do Maria. Uh, but I, I, I've had heard um, from a lot of people your involvement in, in that uh, organization. And I know, I, I'm sure you're just as involved as Maria, who I see at almost every soccer event there is from, you know, years ago. And just at the time and the commitment, people don't understand what goes on. Um, and it's really important for us to take a step back as a community and recognize these individuals for what they do and just to say thank you for their service. So with that said, I'd like to say a few words about both of them. Uh, Maria Adubato. Maria has been active with soccer programs through the rec department and soccer clubs from coaching and managing the program from a rec level to a travel level for all ages for nine years. Still coaching and an officer of the soccer club with none of her own children in the league. 11 years actively working with the Boy Scouts in several different roles. She was a basketball assistant coach for one year with the fifth and sixth, girl, sixth, fifth and sixth girls travel team and helped with the third and fourth grade girls basketball clinic for a year. Again, no kids of her own in the basketball program she assisted. Maria's husband, John, I mean, Maria's husband is Jim and has three kids, Anthony, Danielle, and Joseph. Even if, even if Maria was not coaching, <laughs> She was always ready to lend a helping hand, that's no joke, uh, no matter what the sport is. Maria is a person in Cedar Grove that comes to mind when you think of Cedar Grove sports programs and is a true leader in our community. She will always lend a helping hand when and where she can. So Maria, I'd ask you to come up with your husband. <laughs> um, John Castelloni. John, you've been active with the Cedar Grove Junior Baseball and Softball League for 12 years. John started out as a coach of Pee Wee and moved on up doing everything and anything with the league. He was a commissioner of, or the, of the majors baseball for three years fall baseball commissioner for three years and president of the league for three years. John coached for many years, not only as a rec coach, but also as a travel coach. And he did this spring, summer, and fall for many years. John did everything from keeping the fields to keeping the paperwork, improving the programs, and creating new ones. He made sure he got as many Cedar Grove kids playing Cedar Grove baseball and softball and Cedar Grove as he could. John's voice can still be heard as he announces the open day, opening day ceremony each year and as many games as he can announce for the league. Another passion of John's is teaching young kids how to play the drums. John's wife is Michelle and he has two children, John and Nicholas. John is always around a field or teaching kids how to play the drums. 
He is a very active member of the recreation community and will do almost anything for the, Cedar, for the youth of Cedar Grove kids. He is a true leader in the baseball and softball community and will help anywhere needed. John is always just a phone call away. So with that, I ask John if he would come on up with his wife. I'll, I'll end on this note with, with these two awards. You know, uh, years ago, former Mayor O'Toole, uh, Bob O'Toole, always used to say that, you know, our town is really run by volunteers. No offense to Mr. Tucci, but uh, it really is. I mean, the, the level of volunteerism in our town is second to none. And it's, it's nights like tonight where we get a chance to recognize two, you know, two of those people who go really above and beyond and you know, take time away from their families to volunteer. So thank you again for what you've done for Cedar Grove, what you give to us. Thank you. Okay, moving on with the agenda, um, I'll do a, a number, uh, number three, approval of minutes. I think we could take A and B together if there's no objection. Yes. Just need a motion. Oh, just need a motion. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Councilman Kambiris? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item four, public hearing. Uh, to consider adoption of pending ordinance 17818, repeal of chapter 29 of the Township Code entitled Flood Control Board. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, under discussion, is there a discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. May? Yes, sir. Good. Councilman. Right? Mayor, you need to have a vote to open the public comment. Oh, on this item and this yes. item only? Okay. The meeting is open to the uh, public on this item and this item only. Anybody? Yes, please. If you just come up to the podium, please, and you don't mind turning it in to see your name and um, address for the record, please. Okay. All right, so what you got? I'm no, sorry? Yeah, like to, to us. You, could, okay. you don't mind. I, I should have turned it back. That's My bad. Fine. Thank you. So, Robert Maxwell, 67 Elmwood Road, Cedar Grove. I'm on the Environmental Commission. And my question is, uh, I've read through on the papers, and the Environmental Commission is talked about this topic quite a bit. Uh, the one thing I haven't really heard is the reason for, for the rejection, or a valid reason in my opinion, for not staying on the board. Okay. Is that your question, Mr. Maxwell? Yes. Okay, so I, I think what, you know, um, I think we can each go down, and each one of us has some comments, I think, as to why we feel we should stay in or out. And I think you're gonna hear uh, from the council now and if I, I would I would ask if you have questions after you hear from us you can come back up okay. and I think we'll answer your question then you. okay yep. Mr. Snyder do you want to go up you have the same question okay okay great okay all right uh, Councilman Thank Vargo you. Yeah, Mr. Burns good evening Paul Burns, 2 Elm Drive, Cedar Grove. Um, I've been living on the Peckman River since uh, 1984, I think. Maybe 86. I've been through uh, a lot of storms. Okay, I've seen the, uh, the, the river uh, build up to uh, 15 feet high, okay? Um, I'm sure that was, uh, uh, that I, and I don't remember what storms they were, uh, in recent years, probably in the last 10 years, okay, 
I've seen the embankment being pushed. Okay, uh, we we've had the uh, the brook cleaned up uh, probably about three years ago, um, which was uh, I think it opened up the gates. You'll see if you go if you, if you go to the Peckman River. I don't know if you've ever seen many a time. The Peckman River is a raging river. Okay, it's a babbling brook, ninety percent of the time. But when there's a storm, it's outrageous. Okay, right now you go and you'll see the uh, the brook on the school side above me um, is right next to the fence. Okay, that's that's going to overtake it. There, there's no way to, to replenish that. I, I don't have any idea how you're going to replenish that. Okay, if I, I, I don't understand why there's even a talk of I, I, I kind of glanced through uh, uh, the, uh, the discussion about getting out of it, the, uh, the board, you know, three towns and everything like that. I'm understanding that uh, three, three towns are better than two because the state would listen to three before they would listen to two. So my, uh, my hope is that we stay into, the, into, uh, into talks and... Uh, have the uh, I have the other towns involved, but the other thing is that we're not part of the uh, the river. Okay, the uh, Passaic River. Passaic River. Right. You know, and and I understand that's a big issue, but coming coming down to what we have right here in the Peckham River, coming from Verona, starting in Verona, okay, and as it works down, you know, any any kind of garbage that, that get built up, and we do we do a good job, you know, we haven't done it in a long time. Um, I disagree with you on that. We have done it. We have done it recently. It, we, it gets dredged t twice a year. Dredged? Dredged. Not behind my house. Cleaned. We get cleaned twice a year. Cleaned yeah. twice a year. Yeah. Yeah. Not behind my house. Okay. Well. I'm doing it. You know, and I've done it. I beg the difference. You know, the only reason why that uh, that uh, the leak was discovered was because of me. You know, behind the school. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, regardless. I think uh, I think we should stay in in the uh, in the uh, the board. Okay, All right? that's my thought. Okay, thank you. You know, before we go on to council comments, I'll I'll start first. Why don't I do that? So, um, just to you know, to answer you, Mr. Burns, and you know, you, Mr. Maxwell, and I know Mr. Snyder's opinion. You know, mine again. It's just, this is my opinion. This is a you know, it's a five member council. Everybody's got their own opinion, and everybody can you know. Uh, vote their own way. Uh, I think we should withdraw from it. But that doesn't mean we're abandoning the Peckman River. So for you to think that we're just going to, because we're going to withdraw, we're abandoning the Peckman River is completely incorrect. Okay, number one. Uh, number two, um, two towns or three towns are better than one town. Um, <coughs> You know, maybe that's partially correct. I spoke to the mayor of uh, Woodland Park this morning. And again, I've had a number of conversations with him on this issue, as I've had with the mayor of Little Falls on this issue. I've not been the one who's spoken to the two of them. And neither of them, neither of them have any issue with us, uh, our decision or, or our decision to potentially uh, withdraw if we choose to do so tonight. Um, in fact, what the mayor Wood, uh, Woodland Park told me today is it's his thought that it may even be better uh, suited if uh, Woodland Park and Little Falls uh, joins forces with another Passaic County community that's actually impacted by the Passaic River because we are not impacted by the Passaic River. Um, so those are the conversations I've had with those mayors um, dating back to the summertime um, about this issue. You know, we were originally, as you you know, you correctly pointed out, we were asked to join um, this coalition by Little Falls and Woodland Park uh, back in 2001. Um, and again, like I said, I spoke to the mayors, both mayors, about our potential withdrawal. Why withdraw? Why do Why do I feel we should withdraw? I, I just you know, I I think at this point in time, um, it, it doesn't make sense for us to spend time and resources on a commission that our community doesn't receive any benefit from. Again, that's my, my opinion. Some other members here may have different opinions. That's my opinion. What time and resources are you talking about? So time, the time that it requires for um, council members, council liaisons, to attend meetings and enter into dialogue about different issues, again, not going to impact Cedar Grove. Um, 
the, the time it requires some of our residents, because we need we have count, um, liaisons, residential liaisons, that they have to go and participate in these meetings. Now, right now, we may have one or two individuals who are all excited about being a part of uh, this flood control board, um, but that hasn't always been the case. And as some of our new council members will, will find out, it's we have a very hard time trying to find volunteers to be a part of all of our different committees. Um, that's just that's part of it. And, and resources, what resources? Do we spend money on that board? No, we don't spend money per se on that board. But when you talk about having to spend, have our town manager and our township engineer, maybe other professionals, spend their time on possible grant applications, um, with these grant applications that we know we're not going to receive one dollar from because we don't have a flooding issue. We don't have a flooding issue here dealing with the Peckman River. So we're not going to receive any grant money. At least that's my opinion from what I understand from my, my experience. Uh, we recently did apply for a grant. We didn't receive any money. Did Woodland Park receive money? Yes. Did Little Falls receive money? Yes. Why? Because they have flooding issues. We don't. Also, um, I spoke uh, recently to former Mayor Bob O'Toole, who has been a, was a member of this particular flood control board back from the inception of it. You know, I spoke to him at detail about this, and he actually he actually told me he thought he, again he it's fortunate he couldn't be here tonight, um, but uh, he had said to me that uh, again he thought it was a good idea that we uh, decide to pull out of this commission. Um, his concern has always been from day one when he first volunteered to be the liaison from, for the council was he wanted to make sure if we were going to be part of this commission that we as a, count, uh, as a, as a uh, township didn't fruitlessly spend taxpayer money on something that we were not going to get a better benefit from. That was his main goal. And he was like a watchdog for us for all the years that he spent on that commission. Um, and, and during that period of time, and it was interesting to know that there was numerous occasions, numerous occasions where they talked about they, meaning the board, not just Cedar Grove, they would talk about, oh, we need to come up with money. We need to, we need to put money in. We, we need to get money. And he'd come back to the council and say, well, we, no, we shouldn't be putting money into this. And obviously, as the council at that time would decide not to put, uh, put any money into it because, again, we don't have any issues that are impacting Cedar Grove. So for me... I don't want to spend taxpayer dollars on some board that we do not benefit from. Another example is what happens if they do receive a grant, let's say for $200,000 to dredge uh, the Peckman River at some point in time. And that, that, that the dredging gets, they dredge it and they pick up the, um, you know, all the debris and they're going to have to, they're going to look to possibly look to the townships to take that debris and move it somewhere. Who's going to pay for that? If it's not going to impact Cedar Grove, I don't want to spend taxpayer money on it. That's my feeling on it. I saw recently, you know, article uh, articles about oh, if we're not a part of this coalition, we're not we're, we can lose money. I don't believe it. We've been a part of this coalition since 2001, Mr. Tucci. How much money have you received from it? How much grant money have you received since 2001? Nothing. Zero. Zero. And so I just want to get the facts from the you know, fiction straight. Zero. The Army Corps of Engineers, oh, they're looking at a, uh, you know, a, a plethora of projects. The Army Corps, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, all they do is look at things. They analyze things. They spend money and they, and they look at things. Just to so understand the facts, if the Army Corps of Engineers wants to, um, if they come up with some type of project that the coalition as it stands now is... Um, going to implement. They've been talking about these flood walls, which one of our councilmen will tell you about. These flood walls, which cost millions of dollars, millions of dollars, of which Cedar Grove taxpayers would have to foot the bill for hundreds of thousands of dollars and get no benefit from. We don't need flood walls in Cedar Grove. We don't need them. Again, I mentioned that the Peckman is dredged two times a year. Who dredges, who dredges it two times a year? The Passaic Valley Sewers Commission dredges it two times a year. And who's the chairman of that commission? Our, our manager. We're not abandoning it. Our manager is the chairman of that commission. He's overseeing what's going on in our Peckman, in our, in our township of Cedar Grove. 
Actually, he'll, he'll tell you his role as a commissioner, how he helps out the other towns with their flooding issues. So again, we're not abandoning Cedar Grove. I'm just trying to be more fiscally conservative with our tax dollars. Also, our DPW, on a regular basis, what do they do? Before a big storm, they're constantly monitoring the Peckman River. They're going down there. You may not see him, Mr. Burns, but they're, they're at the Peckman River. They're monitoring the Peckman River to make sure there's no blockage. They're also monitoring all of our catch basins. And then at our last meeting, I, I heard you know there was an issue of flash flooding in Cedar Grove. The issue of flash flooding, 1%. I'm sorry, but I, I don't think those numbers are enough for me to compel us to stay in a flood control board that we get no benefit from. So that's my position, and those are the reasons why I think that we don't belong in this board anymore. Anybody else have any other comments? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Vargo? Um, so this was, th this was a, a tough decision for me. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you, I wrestled with it up until a couple hours ago to try to make sure that I, I come to the right conclusion, what I think is the best conclusion for the town. Um, I think when you, you look at something like this, it's important to look at the historical perspective first. Start from there. Start with the, the original intent of the, uh, of the board, uh, and then work your way forward to where we are today. Uh, and I can tell you that I, I did. Not only did I, I reread the ordinance that created this board, um, but I, I read a, a memo from 2005 that Ms. Stutz was kind enough to send to me uh, earlier today that gives a little bit more in-depth in detail of the intent. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, that I wasn't just satisfied with just reading that. I also reached out to former Mayor Bob O'Toole, and I said, you know, why did we enter into this board, right? Because what has changed from now, uh, from where we are now to when you decided to, to, to do this as a town council? Um, and, you know, his honest um, opinion at, was, and, and, and he, I said that I'm going to share this, was uh, we were trying to be good neighbors, right? Woodland Park and Little Falls approached us, and they said, hey, it would be um, great for us for grants if we had uh, cross-county participation, Passaic County and Essex County, and if we had a third member. member. Uh, at the time, it was something he was adamant against devoting any resources, whether it was financial or otherwise. And if you actually read this memo from 2005, uh, I mean, you actually see it underlined that we will not be, be participating and providing any resources uh, or, or financial resources. So that kind of shaped, you know, the, the historical perspective. And then I was... Uh, Dave Snyder was kind enough to have a conversation. I thank you for that um, on this weekend, this past Sunday. And um, I was able to pick his brain uh, as to what, um, what his thoughts were. And I recognize that's not the opinion of the entire committee, or the entire board. <clears throat> but it certainly is an opinion of somebody who is devoted to that and devoted to this town. And you can see that. I mean, you took the time on a Sunday to chat with us, with us about it. And we appreciate that. Um, so in shaping my opinion, I tried to take in all of those considerations and, and ultimately my, our job here is to decide what's best for the community. Um, and I can, I can assure you, uh, Mr. Schneider, that uh, no matter what happens up here, the information sharing that we talked about will absolutely continue. Uh, the mayor has just said it, the lines of communication are open with our neighboring communities. Uh, so no matter what happens here today, that will absolutely continue. Um, so I can, I can essentially assure you of that, that those, those lines will stay open. So you look at that historical perspective, and where I went was, okay, if that was the intent of why we entered into it, uh, what are we being told now in 2017? And what we're being told now in 2017 is um, they are shifting focus. They're shifting gears a little bit. Uh, the... When you read the ordinance, the ordinance says um, it's to focus on the Peckman and Passaic Rivers, right? So the Peckman's obviously our primary concern. What we're learning now uh, from conversations that the mayor has had with, the, with our other uh, mayors in neighboring communities is that they want to shift focus to the Passaic River. Um, 
And I, I think we'll all agree that uh, everybody on the committee that that is certainly the shift of where they want to go and where they want to spend their time and resources. Now I recognize the Passaic River is it's a problem. There's it's a problem for many communities. It's a problem for the state. There are issues, um, but I have to focus on is it a problem directly for Cedar Grove, um, and that's the balancing act that that we had to play. And um, so. I kind of viewed it as a, the scales of justice. What were my benefits? What were the downsides? Um, and you know, in, in addition to all the resources that the mayor has gone through, that our that our town engineer, our town manager, um, and that we are constantly, uh, if constantly is the right word or not, but we are being asked for money at these meetings, um, and we're constantly in defense of that. Um, it, it leads me to the conclusion based on the historical perspectives and everything that I've heard that um, it is the best for the community, the best decision for Cedar Grove to pull us from that uh, because the information, the primary benefit that I, that I saw from this, the information will remain. And that's the key thing, that information gathering will absolutely remain um, without the additional burdens that we have of, the, of that. So. Um, my ultimate conclusion would be to pull us from the from the board, uh, but maintain that open line of communi communication. Thank you. Anybody else, Councilman Peterson? Yeah, I just I you know much like um, Councilman Vargo said, this was a decision that was not taken lightly. I've been struggling with it for days. When we have residents who are open and they want to go out and do, we would never ever want to discourage that. Um, and again, Dave, I just, I know uh, Mr. Snyder personally, so I was able to have that communication. And what I gathered was that um, I just think it, under the Environmental Commission, you could basically do everything. It just, uh, what needs to be done here in Cedar Grove, it just eliminates that, the flood board portion of it, which I don't see benefit to Cedar Grove from that. Um, I also grew up with the Peckman Town River in my backyard, and it, you know, I moved there in 1972. Well, I was born there. So it, it never gave me a moment's trouble. In fact, it gave me a ton of fun to play in when I was a kid. So, you know, I, at this point, I don't want to be redundant, but just echoing the sentiments of Councilman Vargo and the, and the mayor, I have to agree that it would just be um, just beneficial to the town at this point to just pull out so but I thank you guys all so much for what for what you do and we will continue with the Environmental Commission to watch the Peckman Town River and you know continue on that so thank you Deputy right. Mayor yeah, uh, yeah um, I, I, Mr. Uh, Councilman Vargo I appreciate that historical approach and, and and I think that sheds a lot of a lot of light on what I'm gonna say I, I didn't look at it historically I took a more practical approach to it and I'm not going to repeat everything that the mayor said um, but certainly with all that in mind, um, I, I really, from a practical standpoint, I looked at, I looked at really three things. And the first was um, how much money do we stand to lose because there was an article in the paper that was reported that we were going to lose some $2.2 .2 million in grants. And I think we know that that's not the case. Uh, we just heard it from the town manager today. There, there is no money coming our way from any grants w uh, with regard to us being on the flood board. Um, the second is um, really the, the, the best um, uh, response that I got from you, from the, the, the people who were here that want to stay on the flood board, and Councilman Cumbaris as well, um, is that uh, it's an information uh, issue. That if we're on the flood board, we'll be able to get information and we'll be able to understand what's going on. And while I think that that's important, I also think that um, based upon what, um, what uh, the mayor said about the open lines of communication that he has with the mayors of, of Little Falls and Woodland Park, um, that we don't have to be concerned about that. And also, the Environmental Commission can always send a liaison on behalf of the council or on behalf of their commission to these meetings. And they can bring the information back to the Environmental Commission. And we have liaisons on the Environmental Commission, Councilman Cumberis being one of them, that can come back to us and, 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 and provide us any information that may affect Cedar Grove. So I, I don't think that, that um, staying on the, the flood board for the information of just, for the a reason of just getting information and obtaining information is it really outweighs uh, all the all the reasons that the mayor stated why we shouldn't be on the board. And last, the third thing was really quite simple. 
um, we were on this board uh, in, in order to help neighboring towns. And they asked us to be on the board to help them. They wanted, they wanted a third member. We agreed. We were being good neighbors, as, as, um, as uh, former Mayor O'Toole uh, told, uh, told Councilman Vargo. Um, it's not so much that three is better than two or one is better than three for Cedar Grove's benefit. Cedar Grove was getting no benefit. We were helping. And now the mayors of Cedar Gro of um, Woodland Park and Little Falls are telling us they don't need us. And you know, why are we, and, and they're not saying that in a negative way, and they're saying if you want to stay, you're welcome. Uh, they're not being you know, uh, derogatory at, at, by any means. I mean, but in terms of practicality, we're not really needed on the board. So, so I'm going to vote um, no um, uh, in, in terms of staying on the, on the flood board. Okay. Councilman Brown. Um, Canberras? Yep. Um, I'm the council liaison for the flood board, and not one person reached out to me on the council to discuss the knowledge that I received in the last two years pertaining to the flood board. As I told you in uh, the last meeting, the Peckman River is a flash flood river. It could be months, even years, before something happens, but it will happen. And we just installed these new gauges. It was vital and important to have that gauge on ozone where all the OEMs would be working together on this. When you mentioned about uh, removal of soil, you cannot remove the soil from the Peckman River because of contamination situations. You, cannot, you can move it to the sides, but you cannot re remove it from the river because you can't get rid of it. Uh, it has not cost Cedar Grove a penny being on the flood board. The reason why we did not get the grant money was we were not together on that grant at the time. Uh, Bob O'Toole felt that it was the best interest of Cedar Grove at the time to apply separately by himself. If he applied together, there would have been more money that would have been there, and we would have been uh, uh, beneficiaries of that. The purpose of that money now was to buy, purchase a track hoe. That is a backhoe that has tracks on it, so they can go in the river and move the shoals around without disturbing the soil, putting it aside when the fish aren't in the breeding season. Uh, talking to them, they offered on the flood board that they would allow us, if we needed, to use the track hoe, which was nice of them, even though we were not part of that grant money. They want us on there. The main reason is, is because nothing has been done to protect the residents on that river. Nothing. If you check the records, nothing except we got that track hoe. Now, the Army Corps of Engineers has offered uh, and talked about putting these flood walls. Cedar Grove would only have not even a third of a mile of flood wall. Nowhere else in the town of Cedar Grove. It was, and I explained last time, was St. Vincent's is on one side and a four, a four foot to five foot flood wall would be on the other side. I personally did not agree with the flood wall situation, but it was only in talks. And I think anything that pertains to Cedar Grove, we should be part of, to make that decision, to say we're not part of it, we don't want, we don't want it, we don't want to be part of it. Uh, it's only in discussion, but we should be part of the discussions. Also, we also should be uh, good neighbors to our residents that live downstream. Most of the debris that goes down comes from upstream from us, Verona and West Orange. Uh, there is talks about having Verona come on to the flood board. Uh, I talked to a couple of council members already about that and they have shown interest. They really would like West Orange to be on board, uh, but that is a small step that they wanted to do. Um, they talked about pertaining to the Passaic River having total work come on because it pertains to the Passaic River. But again, they're shifting their focus to the Passaic River, but they have not done anything for the Peckman River. Cedar Grove, Woodland Park, and Little Falls is affected by the Peckman River. A resident died, right? We don't know what's going to happen in the future pertaining to our climate. I don't know. I don't have the answers. But it doesn't cost us nothing. I have two environmental people here that want to be on the flood board. I'm on the flood board. Uh, Mr. Longo was on the flood board. No problems. We also had uh, Jerry Ohms, who actively participated in the flood board. Loved being on the flood board. Right. We have not had any problems with members on there. I think this is a disgrace what we're doing right now. Uh, it doesn't cost us a penny, and we have residents that are in the floodplain, and they pay flood insurance. We are a watch group for them. 
Now, you said that if we're not on there, we're still going to watch. Since I've been on the flood board, I had that river cleaned. I've gone to see Mr. Tucci. I walked the length of that river, right? Mr. O'Toole used to do it, and then he left. I took over walking the river. The Environmental Commission does not want to walk the river. It's for the flood board to do. The Environmental Commission is for the environmental concerns of the fish and the wildlife along that river, right? We like keeping the river uh, more in an environmental friendly way where Woodland Park and Little Falls prefers it to be more like an aqueduct because of the water problems. They want the cement, they want the buffers on um, the uh, cement things on the bottom, and uh, we don't. I've always been for the environment. That's why I thought it was a good idea having environmental people on there because we want to preserve the river in its natural state, fishing and whatever any other residents want to use for recreation. This is a mistake to get off the flood board. Uh, I know I'm only one vote, but I've been on that thing for two years. I don't mind being there. I know the other two individuals don't mind being there. It does not cost us a penny to be there, and they have never asked since I've been on there for a penny of Cedar Grove money. One meeting that Mr. Tucci came with with me and uh, in Woodland Park uh, talking about the flood project from the Army Corps. He was very ins excellent that he was there because he brought up about back pumps and different things that other people there weren't aware of. We are, uh, should be good neighbors, plus take care of our own problems too. And if we have a owner on there, I guess Essex County could shift more from that at the time if they were to do that. That's it. Thank you, Councilman Cambaris. You know, again, the nice thing about our former government, everybody has their own opinion, which is which what you're entitled to. You know, you say it's a disgrace and it's a mistake, that's your opinion, yes. which you're, you're completely entitled to. Now, you, the one comment I will make, you say they, they want us, they, they want this. Now, the they you're talking to is different from the they I'm talking to. I'm talking to the two leaders of the two townships that we're a part of, and neither one of them is telling me the same thing you're telling me. Okay, can so I just, no, no, let I me finish. Let, let, let me finish. Really let me when finish. So, hey, this yeah. is important. Go ahead. Right? The members of the flood board, the mayors of all three towns do not participate in these meetings or these Understood. discussions. They are made up of residents of the community. If the residents of the community, Woodland Park and Little Falls, want us there, we should be there. Get the members of the flood board here and ask them what they feel. Not the mayors. We're supposed to be neutral. The mayor's upset of Little Falls is upset because we went against a project that was close to the water. And when the project was close to the okay, Councilman Cabrera, so I, I don't listen. About the flood yeah. situation. Right. So we volunteered our information right. about that flood situation there, and he wasn't happy about it because it was erradable. Right? What I'm saying to you is the mayors need to stay out yeah. of it. We give a council That's your opinion, Councilman Cabrera. When I give a council right. report on this, and the other right. three uh, towns give council reports, it's for the whole governing body to make the decision what you do with that information. Right. Okay? Until we present that, there should be no interference, and that's what's happening right now. And that's your opinion. That is my opinion. That is but your opinion. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's your opinion again. Yeah. Any other comments? Uh, yes. Sure. There's your name and address. I think we need to make these things a little taller. Uh, Nicholas Harry Cambiris, 41 McGlenn. Um, so, when I appreciate you having me here and let me speak. And uh, Mayor Tanella, you made uh, a lot of very good points uh, to why we should get off, and Mr. Kambiris made a lot of good points to why we should stay on. But when you presented your argument, all I saw was more or less why we should get off. And to form a well-rounded argument, you didn't say anything to why we should stay on. And uh, Councilman Vargo said there's pros and cons, and only named the cons, and any of the pros. So my question is, to form a well-rounded argument, what pros have you looked at in this situation? May I? Sure, Councilman. First off, let me thank you for coming up here. Um, it takes a lot of courage to come up here, and I'm assuming there's a relation here. The second uh, lieutenant. Okay. Yeah, um, that's my father. So um, I, I appreciate your interest and your excitement for it, but um, the pros that I did identify was the information gathering. Um, I struggled with what the pros were to identify. That's that's actually part of the reason why I have decided to, to pull out because of that struggle. If the pros <coughs> were as easily identifiable, um, you know, that I was making a list <coughs> of pros, uh, that's what happens, that's my decision-making process was, what are the pros? 
um, and I struggled to identify what those were except for the one of information gathering. And that one pro, which I mentioned to Mr. Schneider, will continue. That's a huge pro that I, I think is um, a benefit, but pulling out from this, Mr. Comparis, is not, doesn't prevent us from gathering that. And then you focus on the cons, because that's what drove my decision. Because the cons, there were more cons than there were pros. So that's the collective thought process that I personally went through. Um, and, um, and I will tell you this, I appreciate you coming up here um, and, and giving us the feedback. And Councilman Converse, I, I appreciate your energy and your, your passion and your excitement for this. And, um, you know, it's obviously something that's near and dear to your heart. Uh, but I want you to know and I want, you know, the community to know that I think everybody on this, on this council went through a very thoughtful process. This was not a decision that happened overnight. Uh, it was delayed. We heard, you know, this is not the first time it was on for a vote. We delayed that vote because we didn't have enough information. I know personally I didn't have enough information to feel comfortable making a decision. So then I continued to gather information. And that information gathering, um, I wanted there, I can't tell you, I wanted there to be a lot of pros to this, but I wasn't able to find them. So I hope that answers your question um, and helps. Uh, thank you, Councilman Vargo. Uh, Mayor Tonello. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't have anything to add to that. I agree. Okay. So then, and I respect your opinion, but then, how is my father able to come up with so many pros to staying on the board, and why weren't those uh, put into consideration when you came up with your opinions? Again, that's you, that's you, I'll answer it. So that's that's your that's your father's opinion. He has every entitlement. Just because it's his opinion doesn't mean it's my opinion. I, I would I would add that because we're not on the flood board, that doesn't mean that the river isn't going to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. It is. And that doesn't mean that your father can't walk the river. He's welcome to do it whenever he, he wants to do it. He doesn't need to be on the flood board to walk the river and keep an eye out and come back to the council and let us know what's 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 happening. Um, and uh, um, you know, there was there was also a comment I had a question for Councilman Camboris about a resident who died. What what which resident died and what were the circumstances? Um, the debris from the river uh, caused the river to back up the Peckman River, and uh, the water uh, came up so fast, he went down to his basement, and the basement walls caved in on him. Uh, it's probably one of the saddest things for the residents. It was just happened in Little Falls. And, Not uh, in Cedar Grove, though? No. Okay. Because I, 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 I've never heard of that in yeah. the yeah. town. I'm oh, and I, and I can, I was if you want, I could always get that, provide that for you. I, 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 don't, I don't doubt that it happened. It's just that I, I was curious when you said a resident died mm -hmm. I thought you meant a Cedar Grove resident yeah. so uh, so that's that that was you know those those are some of the things and again the information is really the only thing that would keep me from saying uh, you know no to, 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 to leave in the board um, but we're gonna, that's going to continue and the other thing too if I may I just had a question um, councilman computer she said it doesn't cost any money but do we the township engineer it takes his time, right? It would take some of the township engineer's time, and it would take our township manager's time, and they are paid employees. So it does take resources that we put tax dollars into. So that was kind of in my trying to weigh things out. When it says it doesn't cost money, we don't have a fee per se, but it does take resources that have money allocated towards them, like the engineer and our manager. Councilwoman, I'm not 100% positive. I think everybody's salaried. And I don't think they get additional money when they no, go. No, no, not place. additional money. It's take, but they're they're paid employees. So if their their time is being taken away from um, things that are addressing Cedar Grove, and this is not necessarily pertinent to Cedar Grove, it's they're they're utilizing their paid time, whether it's salary. It's I know they're not getting extra money for it, but it's within their working hours that they're being paid for. That they're allocating time towards a grant or whatever may come up. So mm -hmm. it is taking resources that are paid for. Mm -hmm. And so far, that's only happened one time since I think the flood boards have been together. But so it has happened. So to say we haven't given them one dime isn't exactly accurate. Mr. Gamberis, do so, you have any other questions? Um, no. I thank just you. wanted to uh, thank you and that um, if I give my own personal opinion on the matter. Um, I just 
I'd have to agree with my father on this one, and I've been down in Virginia, so I haven't been following with the news in Cedar Grove, but if it costs us somebody's time and their job is to manage the town, then it's not really taking away from their duty position. And it would just be nice in the future when you present an argument, yes, and Mr. Tonelli, you are entitled to your opinion, but you do need to weigh both sides of the argument, and I don't feel like you did that. Thanks, Mr. Cabarrus. I appreciate your opinion. Thank you. Great. And that, um, and if you don't find any pros, and don't take this the wrong way, Councilman Vargo, then you haven't looked hard enough, because there's always pros, and my father brought up those pros, and it doesn't seem like they've waited on your considerations at all. So thank you for your time. Mr. Mr. Cabarrus, you know, just one last thing before we finish this, or, um, this conversation up, and again, I'm not trying to be adversarial about this. You know, I, I, I know it's all right. I, 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 don't, I don't need your concession. I know it's okay. Um, you know, I felt it very important to talk to the two mayors of Woodland Park and, and um, Little Falls. I think it's important as leaders in their community um, to hear what they, their position is. And you're, you're pretty adamant that it's not important and they should be involved. But let me, let me ask you, did you ever solicit either one of those for a letter of support for us to stay into the flood board? Either one of them? Did you solicit them? I talked to Keith Casmore. You asked him for a letter of support to stay yes, in? Because so you're, you're telling, let me finish. Yeah. So you're, you're, at, you're telling me in front of the, the people here how, how I shouldn't be talking to them. I don't need to be talking to them. It's not important. They should stay out of it. Meanwhile, you're trying to get a letter of support from the mayor of Woodland Park for us to stay in it so you can come back here and say, look, I got a, mayor from, a letter from the mayor of Woodland Park. We should stay in here. So, I mean, it, you, can't, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. That's it's either one or the other. That's childish, what you just said. No, it's it's, 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 I'm telling the truth, you know? which I find that you have a hard time maybe, saying sometimes. Maybe if you I'm just telling the truth. the question, I would have given I, you the answer. Well, I did ask I, you the question. I seen uh, Keith Kazmark, and, and he told me that he wanted us to stay on the mm -hmm. flood board. That was from his mouth. Mm -hmm. He said that we're probably going to split the meeting and stuff, but he said he did not want C to grow from that. There was only one mayor who wanted us not to be there, and that was the Little Fool's mayor. As far as you know. So, yes. And in that conversation, I said to him, I said, I would love a letter of support so I can go back to my council and show them that you do. Because I didn't know that you talked to him this morning, right? But I did email him this morning and say to him, if you could provide a letter of support, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Right? And I don't think there was anything wrong with that because especially if he could not come here because he's in the middle of an election. And he also asked you to wait until the election was over mm -hmm. with before you did this. Mm -hmm. And that because they have council members that are up for election in Little Falls and in Woodland Park right now. So tomorrow's election day, and this is probably something that shouldn't have been brought up until after the fact. Well, it, it, okay, I'm not at, I'm not the call and back of uh, the beck and call of the mayor of Woodland Park. I just called to ask him if we should be in it. What he wants to do with his town is his business. What mm -hmm. what I feel we should do with our town is was my business, and obviously everybody has their opinion. own opinion. Well, our it's 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 what I want to do with this town is my business, my opinion, mm -hmm. and what you want to do and you want to say that's your opinion. You have your opinion, I have mine. The nice thing about this form of government, we each have our own opinion. Correct. Okay. And, and I do for the residents of this town. All right. I represent the residents of this community, and I represent the people that live in the flood plain. That's why I'm here. Right. And that's why I'm fighting so hard to do this. That's why we're all there here. There is people that do not know, like I asked you last night, to send a letter out to every resident that lives in the flood plain because they have no clue what's going on right now. Right. Because most people don't pay attention to these meetings and don't go on the website. Right. So they have no idea. Right? And they have to pay out of their pocket every month for flood insurance. And one day, when the trees back up and the water comes into their basement, they're going to get hit with a big bill, most likely like a $5,000 deductible. And uh, So I'm fighting for the residents of this town. That's it. And, uh, anything else there, Councilman Cabarrus? Any mayors of the town. Any, any, any other any comments? That's it. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, any other comments? Uh, roll call, please. You, you okay over there, Ms. Stutz? I you still there? All right. Excellent. This, this vote is to to remove ourselves, right? Is that is that how the the, the resolution reads? Yes. Yes. That, so a yes, yes. vote yes. is to pull us out. Yes. Okay. Councilman Cumburis. Definitely no. Councilwoman Peterson. Yes. Councilman Vargo. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Yes. Mayor Tanella. Yes. Item five: rejection of bid A to consider resolution rejection of bid for furnishing of equipment and personnel. Personal removal. Be it resolved that the bid be rejected. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Yes, the bid is being rejected because the proposals came in above the engineer's cost estimate 
and it's above the budget that was budgeted for this purpose. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. A roll call, please. Councilman Cambiris? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item 6. The meeting is now open to residents of the township wishing to be heard on any item on the agenda. See none. I close that portion of the meeting. Uh, reports of township officials. Good evening, Mr. Tucci. Uh, good evening, Mayor. I have a few items this evening. Uh, the first one uh, a report on uh, new hires. Uh, uh, we hired a few people recently. First one was a part time clerk for the municipal court. Uh, we hired Tony Ann I. Mercy, who is a Cedar Grove resident, as the part timer in the courts. Uh, Tony Ann has been a resident for quite a while, very active in the South End FSA and also in other various community uh, service projects throughout the town. And she started on October the 16th. The second one is our DPW. We hired uh, Eric Vanderstreet as a full time maintenance worker in the DPW. Eric is a veteran of the United States Air Force and a lifetime Cedar Grove resident. And ironically, Eric started today. Thirdly, uh, we offered in our police department uh, Anthony J. Grigolo uh, an offer of conditional employment. And why it's conditional is it's subject to him completing the, uh, he's in the Bergen County Police Academy. Uh, Anthony is a resident of Paramus, had a very impressive resume. Uh, he's fulfilling those requirements for PTC certification. He is a graduate of Marist College with a degree in criminal justice. He's also served as an intern on the Poughkeepsie, New York, while he was at college and the New Hyde Park Police Departments. He's also a certified EMT in both New York and New Jersey. He served on both the Paramus and the Hackensack Rescue Squad, and he's also a volunteer firefighter uh, in Paramus. He currently holds a Class 1B Special SLEO 2 certification and also a Firefighter 1 and 2 certification. He's scheduled to complete the police academy sometime in mid-December, and his swearing game will be January the 2nd. So I just wanted to bring the council up to speed on where we are as far as new hires. Second uh, item I had this evening, it's a bittersweet announcement. Uh, Ms. Carol Lay, who's one of our longtime crossing guards, she's been here 40 years, is announcing her retirement. And uh, let me tell you, as a special lady, who's put her heart and soul into this community for a lot of years and I, I would just suggest that maybe the council might want to do a, a certificate I know she's uh, not in great help I don't know if she'd be able to come here but I think it would be an honor to present her or at least send her something maybe a certificate or a plaque I, I don't I, know if the council's yeah. feeling is on that but I it, just it, might feel right. if there's no objection I, I agree with Mr. Tucci um, I saw that information in our packet and I, I couldn't get over how long Mrs. Lay has been a uh, no, a volunteer with our community. Just I think uh, over 40 years, rain, snow, and snow. Right. Yeah. Talk about postman, Mrs. Lay. It's just yeah. as good as them. So if there's no objection, can we put a, a certificate together for her? Is that okay? No objection. No All right, great. Objection. Anything else, Mr. Tucci? Uh, yes. Next item uh, in the packet, you'll see a memo addressed to me from the South End Fire Company. Uh, they would have like to have uh, a fundraiser. They normally have it at the South End Firehouse. Uh, and they want to hold it on uh, December the 9th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, it's normally they run a coin toss there. And I just want to advise the council uh, if there's any uh, objection to it. Council would always ask that I uh, just run it by them when they do these kind of fundraisers. Any objection to that? No. no objection. I will notify South End Fire Company of that. Also in the packet, there are two requests for water bill adjustments. And you'll see Mr. Homer's uh, recommendation on both is to offer no adjustment. I don't know if the council agrees with that, but you can either reaffirm or reject Mr. Uh, Homer's assessment. But I think his uh, reasons are well laid out. Um, on, on that issue, Mr. Tucci, I've read the um, memo from Mr. Homer, and I concur with his um, opinion and go along with his opinion that we should not offer any adjustment. I don't know what the, uh, the council, what the, what's their pleasure? Do you agree? Anybody have any comment, questions? So we go along with uh, Mr. Holmes' recommendation. Okay, Mr. Holm, Tucci. Thank you, and that, that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you. Mrs. Stutz. Good evening. Good evening. The one comment I have is a reminder that tomorrow is the general election, and the polls will be open from 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. That's it. That's it. It's a very important announcement. Thank you, Ms. Dutz. Seriously, thank you. Um, appreciate that. Um, Mr. Zielinski, good uh, evening. Good evening, Mayor. Um, uh, three things for executive. Uh, 
uh, session this evening. Uh, Kay Havnanian, the Coptic Church, and Koa. Is that it, Mr. Zelensky? That's it. Thank you. Okay, council reports. I can start off. Um, earlier in October, um, after our last meeting, I had a chance to go over to uh, Morgan's Farm to um, pick some pumpkins with my kids, and uh, and I try to get there every year during this time of year. And it's just, it, it always amazes me, again, the, the level of volunteerism that goes on in our community. Um, uh, Julie Ostring and her husband John, who are very involved with the Cedar Grove Historical Society, and Mrs. Uh, Jean Yeager, um, also very involved. We're all there, you know, sleeves rolled up, running around the farm. Um, I actually took my daughters for the first time on a tour of actually um, the museum of Morgan's Farm, and uh, it was pretty eye-opening. I've been in Mr. Um, Mr. Morgan's house uh, several times. Uh, once as a young boy, when I was about 13 years old, I worked for him for a summer, and he was an interesting character. He's a very, uh, uh, he was a, a big man. Uh, at that time, he was very, he was older. But he was a big man and um, uh, scary for a 13-year-old kid and some of his friends to be working in the farm. But um, it's a part of our history, and I'm glad I'm a part of it. Um, it was nice to be able to walk through the house, and Miss Yeager was able to take us back to the very beginnings, beginnings of Cedar Grove from a historical viewpoint. It was really great. It was great for my kids uh, to see it. And I just want to thank them uh, for what they do over there. And if you have a chance to get over, stop over there, um, they're having a, always having something um, natural or organic for sale. Um, and it's, it'll help benefit the historical society. Um, on Wednesday, we had our monthly recreation uh, board meeting and the topics that were dis that we discussed a number of topics the biggest one is um, the pool and I, I think over the next in a couple of weeks we could sit down with Mr. Tucci and Mr. Homa and I think come back in front of the council and, and talk about you no know, um, the pool this past year and the pool uh, for 2018 but that really um, dominated the majority of our our discussion and then um, lastly I know um, this uh, Saturday coming up there, Cedar Grove Fire Department is holding a beefsteak, charity beefsteak dinner for former um, fire chiefs Mike Jorn and Stan Crowell, who are both battling cancer. Um, I don't know Stan as well as I do Mike. I've known Mike since I was a young boy, and uh, like some of the folks that we recognized here earlier tonight, Mike, uh, and I'm sure Stan as well, They've been a part of the fabric of our community since I can remember and uh, always looking to help people. Now they need our help. So I encourage anyone, if you can't go to the beefsteak, go to um, contact the Cedar Grove Fire Department and see if you can make a donation to help both of these uh, fine men out. Um, just trying to think here. Oh, and, and lastly, just for the, the council, I'd like, uh, like you to know, I was asked to perform a wedding uh, of a resident um, the day before Thanksgiving, still trying to coordinate where the wedding is going to take place. But if there's no objection from the council, I'd like to tell the resident that it's okay for me to go ahead and perform the wedding. Everybody's okay with that? No All right. objection. That's, um, Let us know where it is so we can, we can come <laughs> <take> <laughs> <pictures>. Right. <laughs> um, uh, what else here? recognition I think that's that's all I have. And, and, and the last thing I just want to bring up I know uh, last Saturday I, I we we had the Susie Susie G Komen uh, fundraiser um, you know in st. Catharines of Siena uh, was able to pull together their first annual charity run that occurred I think two Saturdays ago I believe was that okay. 28. was it last Saturday uh, again, I, I wasn't. I had a conflict, a personal conflict. I wasn't able to attend, but uh, from the people who I, I saw, you know, some of uh, a lot of our residents who attended, some of our board of education members were there. It, again, it's just another activity bringing the community together, which is great. Uh, it was really well received, and I hope that they're able to continue that on an annual basis. So that's it for my my report, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first. 
Um, I want to ask Mr. Tucci. Mr. Tucci, uh, I've heard I've had some complaints from the residents over on um, Vandenberg and Pine and Oak, you know, the streets that we we recently paved. That um, uh, and I promised them I would go over there and look. I haven't gotten there yet. I will. I've seen some pictures. That the seams across the road from where the old pavement and the new pavement were have like half inch to inch un still unevenness, and they're concerned that once we start plowing when the snow falls, mm -hmm. that it's going to rip up the brand new street. So you're talking from the old roadway to where the new roadway meshes with it? Correct. All right, I'll have, I'll have our maybe guys we can take a look at it. We have someone take a look at that. And, and they also um, complained that there was a garbage truck in the neighborhood recently. That, do you know about that? I investigated that whole thing. On, uh, I believe it was on Oak Drive. Yes. Uh, resident sent me that I had the garbage company out there and our DPW. What happened was our resident did not follow the regulations on disposal of paint. So they put paint in a garbage bag, and when the garbage truck came and crushed it, it leaked and left a paint residue down on the new pavement. On the new pavement. Uh, unfortunately, I had the when I found out about it, I had the garbage company, which it was not their responsibility because they did the right thing. Whoever the resident was that put the paint in the container was the issue. Uh, they went back with speedy dry, but the paint had already dried. After that, I had our town uh, sewer department go out there. First of all, we took samples to make sure it wasn't it was a, a water-based paint and it wasn't toxic. And second of all, after that, we had the town sewer truck with the power washer try to wash it off, which was unsuccessful. Now we are investigating some solvents that will not harm the new roadway and get the paint off, but we're investigating it. But that, those were the circumstances under which that happened. Great. Thank you very much, Alyssa. I'll go back and report to the mm -hmm. residents that contact me about, about that. Um, and, and the second thing is just more general for, for the council to consider maybe long term. And, um, and I know Ms. Hardwick is here and she always loves coming because we always have things to bring up that she can go back to the county with. Um, but uh, um, as everyone knows, I served, I served on the Board of Ed for, for six years. And um, one of the biggest concerns that we have, we had, well, not one of the biggest, but a big concern uh, happens around every election day, which is, of course, we know tomorrow. So um, on election day, we have to open up our schools, and our kids are in the schools. And we open up our schools to anybody who wants to walk into the school. The Board of Ed has gone through painstaking measures in the last several years to make sure that there's security systems at the front door, that there's cameras, that you have to walk in. When you walk in, you show ID. Um, they'll buzz you in if, if you're there for a legitimate reason. And that has to happen every single school day, 162 school days a year, except for one. And that's on election day when anyone who wants to can walk into the school. Um, they do take security measures. They put some fencing up, some gates up um, to try to block off the, the area. But, um, you know, it's, it's, the, the gates are, are, are just these metal gates and um, they're, they're, you know, not foolproof. Um, and I've been uh, uh, asked if I can come back to the council. As you know, I'm the liaison to the, to the Board of Ed, so I've been asked if I can go back to the council and just kind of plant the seed that, you know, we've got a new community center in town. We're going to have a new firehouse in, in the future, um, uh, in, the, in the near future. Uh, you know, if we can kind of start thinking about, and I know that the Board of Elections and the county has to be involved, but if we can kind of start thinking about maybe alternate locations for the in-school voting. So we've got the high school, we have two districts there. We have two districts at the middle school, and we've got North End, South End, and, and LRP. So uh, it, it's probably half of the districts in town, and I know that, that you know, it, it's not going to be an easy fix, but, um, and it's not going to be a simple fix because of the bureaucracy involved in, in, in doing this, but I, I would like to start to at least uh, possibly thinking about, you know, um, in, in, the, in the near future, um, trying to get... Uh, especially with all the things that we hear in the news today, um, you know, the, 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 the things that are going on in the world, that we, we keep our doors closed to the public on, on Election Day and, and, and every day. And just the, the kids who are in there and the teachers who are teaching them and the volunteers who are, who are also screened and, and fingerprinted uh, before they're allowed to go in, 
um, be allowed in, in our schools. Uh, Mr. Tucci, on that note, I, I guess you know we have Ms. Hartwick here. What would be the next step, just to start and have a discussion to investigate, do some diligence on that issue? What would you recommend that we do as a council to look into that? Well, if you don't have elections, I, I don't want to speak for the clerk who is. Okay, Ms. Stutz, I'll ask, the, right? uh, I'm sorry. The liaison to the Board of Elections, but what you would have to do uh, hypothetically is find alternate locations to put these polling places. When you say we, so um, is, is that just the first? In, is that the first step and then we go to well, Ms. Dutz or what would happen, what, right. happen is you could suggest and then the clerk would have to take it to the Board of Elections and they would have to approve those locations okay because there's there are various factors but I don't want to speak for the clerk go ahead no you're right you're right, right. you're right there okay. are certain state statutes right. that regulate the use of polling places <coughs> Right. places sites one of which is they should be in public buildings right which is why where they I, are right now exactly right. Um, and then there's also a myriad of requirements right. for accessibility right um, would it make and sense the Board of Elections is it's the Board of Elections is the final arbiter on the issue yes. right okay why it would it make sense for us if we you know if it does it First of all, as a council, is it is everybody in agreement? You want to look into this issue, or what, what, what's your I guess what's your uh, <coughs> sentiment on that? I think it's I a good idea to look into. I would say absolutely. Okay. Our kids are the council most important. Council yep. All right. So the, if, if maybe made the next step would be why don't we put it on the agenda for our next staff meeting, uh, or I don't know. You want to wait until you know since the election is tomorrow, we can wait until January and put it inside. I mean, we can we can do it now. Start looking at these. Talk about it. The next. And just so that you know the election time schedule, right. the next election after this general election is not until June of 2018. Right. So, you, I mean, there there is time. Right. But I think perhaps you may want to, I, I would suggest maybe bringing in the uh, clerk of, from the Board of Elections. Okay. To talk about it. You. Right. As to what the requirements are and the types of buildings that may be great. But maybe if we, if you don't mind, you want to reach out and invite her to, if there's no objection to our next staff meeting or next meeting she can attend. Staff meeting may be a little. Right. Or, or, or ne whenever. Do we reach out and see her availability and see if she can come to one of our meetings. And at least we can educate ourselves and then we can have a subsequent discussion about it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Deputy Mayor. Mayor. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Peterson. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Um, I just have, I, I, like you said, I participated in the Susan B. Komen walk at Panther Park, and Maurice Landoffy did. I'm absolutely <coughs> amazed at what they pulled together that night. <coughs> it, was, it was overwhelming. I was able to be on a team with some of the members of our Board of Education, which was really nice, and we walked, and, you know, the, the people that work on that committee do an extraordinary job, so hats off to them um, and I, I don't really have uh, any reports I haven't had meetings since our last meeting but uh, I have a question for Mr. Tucci sure. um, a couple residents reached out to me regarding communication um, they were upset because of the communication of the hydrant flushing they hadn't seen anything about it they, I, <laughs> they were wondering with um, and I know we had a conversation once but I couldn't remember exactly what with the Nixel the well. alerts could it go out on, can traffic, um, like road closures, everything go out on a Nixle alert? Well, or? there are certain elements that go on, on Nixle and certain elements that go on through a community bulletin. Uh, as far as hydrant flushing, hydrant flushing was on the township website, in the township newsletter. It was broadcast over Nixle. It uh, was it on Nixle? It was on Nixle. Oh, okay. Now, the problem with the Nixle program is residents have to register for Nixel in order she to get She said she gets Nixel. Because but if you register for Nixel, you not only get Cedar Grove Nixel, I get Nixels from North Coral, I get Verona, right. I get Little Falls. And it's the same thing with our Remind Our program, which is our solid waste and recycling. And that's another one. Uh, I just looked the other day. How many do we have, Mr. Tucci? We have uh, approximately 600. To... Out of how many? Right, right. 13,000, right. 12,900 folks. On the up. Remind Our. Uh, remind Our. And again, all you have to do is go on and just give your email address, and it tells you when your garbage gets picked up, when you're recycling, when the bulk 
when the leaf collection is, you name it, and it tells you the night before. So, it, again, a lot of these uh, alerts, you have to sign up for them. It's much like uh, when Deputy Mayor brought up the issue of checking the homes uh, when you're on vacation, you have to sign up for that. The special registry, you have to sign up for that. These are notifications, and again, they're in, on our website, they're on um, these scribe, uh, they're in the right. newsletter that we circulate. I, I, I don't know how many more ways that we can reach out. Right. But the flushing went out on Nixel, so I don't know why go, she, so did, she must have, okay. It did, it did go out on Nixel. Okay. I, I received it myself. Okay. I couldn't remember if I received uh -huh. I saw it everywhere, so I didn't, okay. but. Um, <laughs> you saw it everywhere. Okay, <laughs> well, it, you know, it's some, it's, people are busy, and it's, but the Nixel, I guess, uh, but other people have brought that up to me that also, without communication. There's so. one other uh, means of communication that we urge people to sign up for, and it's on our website also. It's our reverse 911 through our water department. When there are water and sewer main breaks, instead of blasting the whole town, we blast just the area that's affected. And if you sign up for it, you'll get the alert just in the area. Because a lot of times, when it goes out general, it, it creates a little bit of chaos because people on South End are wondering what, you know, whether their right. water is going to be affected on North End. So we try to localize it. Okay. And all of these things you can sign up for on our website. You go on the website and okay. you can sign up directly through, okay. through the website. And again, they're also in the newsletters that go out to all the homes. So if you look right. on the refrigerator, if you saved it, yeah. the information's there. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very okay. much. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, just, to, just on the website and communication, I know uh, Mr. Tucci, you and I talked earlier, all these things are on the website, and we are in the process of updating the website. The website yeah. So hopefully in the next you know, couple months, hopefully by the new year, we're going to, that new year will be revamped and ready to go. Along that line, right. I just want to put out another you know, public safety bulletin. Not public safety, but public bulletin. Uh, I apologize for any inconvenience, anybody calling town hall. Right. Our town phone system crashed. <laughs> And we were in the process of changing over to a new phone company. LightPath is going to be our phone company. So it didn't make sense for us to spend $25,000 to have the old one repaired. Uh, I thank people for their patience, but by the end of next week, the new phone system will be installed. Great. They say the inconvenience is temporary, the, the uh, repair or the uh, improvement is permanent. That, that's I like the that. Premise that we're Very going. nice. I like that. Can I just to that? Let me just say that I had called town hall twice in the last week or so. One for a bulk pickup, and and one to speak to uh, Maurice in the rec department about a, 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 a issue with um, a league for my one of my children. And um, both times I got a live person, uh, and they transferred me right where I needed to go, <coughs> and there was no problem, and it was flawless. So, uh, you, so you're, you're you're absolutely correct, Deputy Mayor. The issue is after hours. What happens is because the phone attendant wasn't able to transfer you in the evening hours. But during the day, we had somebody manually picking up the phone and transferring. Thank you very much. For that. Yeah. No Thanks, Deputy Mayor. Okay. Uh, Councilman Cabarrus? Yes. Um, I just, Mr. Tucci, uh, an update on the hearing impaired uh, device. The uh, hearing impaired device, I believe it has arrived. It's right there. It's is this this device here? This uh, 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 wireless? Yeah, I believe, yes. I believe it is. The court uh, purchased it, and it's here for uh, public use. And the question I have is, if someone in the audience should have a problem, they do you should have be able something to, for them. Yes, to, they should be able to it, work right off of that device. Okay. It's not Bluetooth. You would have to give them a device. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, th the next question is: uh, the cemetery off of Commerce Road uh, behind the Presbyterian Church, if I got that right, where Morgan's Farm is. Yes. Uh, does the township control that cemetery at this time? Uh, yes, we do. Okay, um, we've talked in the Environmental Commission about possibly doing something in there, maybe having the Boy Scouts or something to kind of beautify it and kind of... Well, that's that, why I'm asking. That's not allowed in particular because there are regulations in cemeteries on what can be done and what can't be done and who can go in there. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had uh, somebody from the state in there recently uh, because there was some, there's some erosion down on the back end mm -hmm. and uh, the soils need to be replenished and we had to get uh, direction from them on what is allowed and what's not allowed but only our staff is going to be able to go in and do those type of repairs mm -hmm. as far as general maintenance you know picking up debris that would be okay but as mm -hmm. far as the maintenance on the grave sites that answer is absolutely not okay 
All right. Thank you. And then, uh, then the last thing is, uh, I mentioned to the council, uh, uh, Peter, you weren't uh, in the in the room at the time. Uh, we have an eagle at the Cedar Grove Reservoir. Uh, he's flying around. He's uh, actively feeding uh, the beautiful thing. Again, that's something that in the future we really need to look at preserving all the lands that are around that reservoir. Uh, if we have an eagle there, the habitat must be coming back strongly. Uh, also, too, is if anybody goes to observe that, I would keep a distance because they are very sensitive to human encroachment. That's it. Thank you. Councilman Vargo. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Um, I have a, a report um, from the Downtown Advisory Committee. We, uh, we ha had a meeting about three weeks ago, um, and uh, we discussed a, a bunch of ideas. So I've actually uh, circulated... Uh, one of the items is we've, we've constantly talked about the, the trestle and beautifying the trestle. Um, well, that's actually starting to move along in our committee process. What I've done is um, Dave Fletcher, who's a, a graphic designer, website designer, um, has put together a proposed trestle um, mural. And this is in the, the very early stages. But what I did, what I wanted to do was make sure that we share it with the council early. Um, and we solicit your feedback so that way we can incorporate any comments that you may have before the design process gets too far along. Uh, what we tried to do on one side is to show um, a downtown Cedar Grove. You have the, uh, the, uh, the clock tower in there, and what you'll have are some, some of the buildings that resemble downtown Cedar Grove, people shopping as murals. We have to remember that this is going to be painted. So um, we have to come up with something that is somewhat simple that can be painted, that looks good and, and, and works. On the other side, we have um, some cedar trees. We have some deer in there. Um, and what really embodies Cedar Grove. And um, over the top of the trestle, we have runners, uh, we have bikers um, and walkers to, to remind our residents that we do have a, a trail up above there. Uh, what we learned at our last meeting was a lot of residents actually don't know that there's a trail up there, and we think that this will draw some attention. Uh, we realize that this is a process that we have to incorporate the feedback. There are yellow tags that you see throughout the mural. Uh, those will be QR codes. I don't know if anybody's familiar with a, a QR code, but um, if you look really close, there's, uh, the yellow, there's a yellow tag that, for example, has um, a biker. Uh, a bike there. There'll be a QR code above it, then you scan it with your phone and it will hopefully give you the, the trail that's above it. Um, you have a public transportation right below it as an example. You scan that QR code and it will hopefully sync in with the public transportation that's available around there. Uh, same thing with shopping. Um, you have it on the other side. You scan that, it'll tell you what businesses are in the local area there. So. Not only will this be a mural to help beautify the entrance door downtown, but it will be informative and it will help um, our residents and hopefully increase the walkability of the town. So, um, I, I don't want to I don't want to put anybody on the spot in terms of asking for feedback now. If I could maybe ask if you take it home and if you have some ideas, bring it back to us so that way we can incorporate it into our next downtown meeting. I think it would be uh, would be really helpful. And then once we get the approval, we'll take the next steps and uh, and go through you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Vargo. Okay. This is great. Um, with regard, so we had a, a busy meeting at our last downtown advisory meeting. Um, the other, another piece that we've been focusing on is the safety. We had Greg Boniello um, attend the quarterly Safe Streets Essex County meeting um, to, you know, again, to focus on Cedar Grove and see what we can do to improve the walkability and the safety of our downtown area. Uh, the, the paving and the restriping of the downtown area will certainly be beneficial, uh, but Safe Streets has expressed some interest in um, performing a walking audit of our downtown area. Uh, and they'll give us some feedback as to what we can do. Um, I think that walking audit might be more beneficial um, after we sort of the landscape of that downtown area has changed. We might get different recommendations once it's done, um, but perhaps we can show them the plan. So that's another area that we're working on. And then uh, I can tell you this, I have been asked by residents um, probably a good 30 to 40 times about potential events in our downtown area. I can, our, our, our residents, from what I'm hearing, they want some excitement. They want something to happen in the downtown area. And it's something that we are looking at. 
There's ideas that we've been floating around, such as the food truck festival. Some of our neighboring towns have had some great success having some events. Um, so right now, what we're targeting is um, to put together an event. It's not easy. It takes some time. But we are um, targeting an event for May. We don't know quite what the shape and feel of that will be. Um, but we do know that there will be the goal would be to have some food trucks involved, some excitement for the kids, bring the families down into the downtown area, um, and proposed locations. Well, the goal is to keep it in the downtown area. I think we have some great locations outside. Community Park is one, but the goal would be to keep it sort of in the downtown area, so either at LRP or even here, but all to be discussed. Uh, so that's some excitement that we're looking to bring to the downtown area. Um, and um, let's see. The one other question that came up is um, as we look at our downtown area, um, a lot of the feedback that we got from um, Jeff Bueller from Trenton who came to our meeting was um, visibility of our businesses. And not only can you see them from the street, but can you actually see what is going on inside that store from the street? That actually helps improve your downtown area and it actually helps improve the business inside. Uh, if people see driving by, they see what's going on in, within the building, it creates excitement. So the question that was raised, and I, don't, I didn't know the answer, um, but are there any types of either, or is there an ordinance in place that restricts the front of the, the businesses from, from shielding what's inside, or is there um, any guidance we can put out as a town to try to encourage uh, our business owners to open up the shades almost, I'll, I'll call it, or any signage that's covering? Do we know of anything that either can be done or is already on the books that, um, that might help promote the downtown area? Mr. Zielinski, are you aware of anything uh, in that nature? No? I'm not aware of any no. ordinance that restricts and requires. There's nothing that pre precludes right. visibility. There's nothing on that. On nothing the that precludes visibility. No. Okay. It's just a matter of uh, architecturally what was approved for that building when it was designed. Mm -hmm. If you're going to change the facade of the building, normally you go back before the planning board. Sure. And I'm sure if you promote it the way you just explained it, right? It's, it's it, a positive. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. It, you know, we. Um, I think the goal that we discussed at least initially was let's see if there's anything on the books first. Mm -hmm. Uh, but let's educate our business owners. So with the, the council's approval, what we'd like to do is put together some type of pamphlet from the downtown advisory committee, uh, letting our business owners know that you know this could be helpful, and here are some suggestions, um, and see if they'll if they'll follow. So it would be a suggested approach mm -hmm. if the town council has no objection yeah. to that. Now, there are really restrictions good. as far as signage, types of signage, you know, neon things mm -hmm. of that nature. So there's, there's pros and cons there. Got it. So if you have no objection, no objection. Put, I don't put that together. Objection? Yeah. And then the fundraiser for uh, Mr. Kroll and Mr. Jordan, I will be there and uh, I encourage as many residents to go there and, and support. Uh, they need our help and they've helped us out. Definitely. So that's all, right. all I have. Thanks, Mr. Fargo. Can you just make a comment? Yeah, sure. Uh, Councilman, you mentioned about a, uh, an event in May, and you also mentioned LRP. I know that in the past, the Board of Ed has been helpful uh, okay. with Unico. They lent the Unico, yep. uh, the, the you know LRP parking lot. Sure. And uh, I'm sure that if it doesn't interfere with um, you know anything that they have going on, that they okay. may you know may want to do that again. So if you need any any assistance in in you know getting to the right channels, I can I can help you out. So that's the process. So the Board of Ed, we would go through the Board of Ed to secure the space. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and then um, with Unico, I know the Unico came back to the governing body to ask for a waiver so they can have a beer or wine garden, and you know okay. if that's part of what what you want to do. Yeah, that, that was but certainly would, discussed. Yeah. You, you need the you need the, the board of ed to give you the the, the space to begin with. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you. you know, just piggybacking off of uh, Councilman Vargo, though safety issue, Mr. Tucci. Um, I guess we've talked about it in the past. It's coming up a couple of times. I know uh, Ms. Hartwick is still still with us. On Bradford, at Bradford Avenue, down by Panther Park, the walkway going from the crosswalk from Panther Park over to uh, Blasey Field. 
what do we need to do to you know move that discussion along? We, where where, where as, are we at? As per, we had that discussion, I think, at a previous meeting. Right. The township engineer has already spoken with the county engineer regarding the issue. Okay. So they're throwing around some ideas back and forth, and uh, Mr. Vargas has told our township engineer what uh, steps need to be taken right. in order for them to even entertain it. So at this point, are we waiting to hear back from the county? Are they waiting back to no, no, resistance? We're, we're, we're waiting. The county engineer told our township engineer what steps he okay. needs to take. And right now, he's looking at it. He has to get traffic safety involved. We have to do traffic counts. Right. There's a whole lot of preliminary work that has to be done before you can even Just, start. Okay. And that's not a guarantee. The county engineer is not saying it's, it's a slam dunk it's going to happen. Right. But the, these are the procedures that you need to follow in order for them to entertain it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have any comments? All right. Moving on with the agenda. Uh, item eight, new business. A, to consider an introduction of pending ordinance 17819-2018, allowable rent increase. Is there a motion? So moved. Here. Uh, I, move, I move introduction of pending ordinance 17-819 to be published in full in the Verona Cedar Grove Times as a pending ordinance with a public hearing scheduled for December 4th, 2017. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Cambiores? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tonella? Yes. Item 8B to consider a resolution concerning 2018 Police Department employee salaries. Be it resolved that the salaries enumerated herein constitute the salaries for fiscal year 2018 for officers of the Cedar Grove Police Department. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mayor. This is the fourth year of a four-year contract for the police department. This was previously previously done by ordinance, and it's a two percent increase uh, for the police department. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, roll call, please. Councilman Cambiras. Yes. Councilwoman Peterson. Yes. Councilman Vargo. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tonella? Yes. Item 8C, to consider a resolution concerning 2018 DPW employee salaries. Be it resolved that the salaries enumerated herein shall constitute the salaries for fiscal year 2018 for employees covered under Section 1 of the Salary Ordinance represented by the Township of Cedar Grove Employees Association. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Can you read? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Never mind. What's that? No. Okay. We have a motion with a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Cambiores? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tonella? Yes. Item 8D to consider a resolution concerning tax reductions granted by Tax Court of New Jersey. Be it resolved that the required ta tax cancellations be made for Block 280, Lot 560. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Cambiores? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tonella? Abstain. Item 8E to consider a resolution concerning 2018 municipal holidays. Be it resolved that the holidays listed herein will be observed for the year 2018. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Cambiores? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tonella? Yes. Item 8F, to consider resolution concerning sale of municipal property. Be it resolved that the property listed herein, which is no longer needed for public use, shall be advertised for sale and sold to the highest bidder at public auction via govdeals.com. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mayor. Yes. Uh, this is the annual auction that we have every year for all our surplus equipment and vehicles that <coughs> we no longer use and take out of service. Uh, traditionally, we had the old-fashioned type of auction where we had an auctioneer come in and people come in and review the equipment the day before. This year, we're moving to what they call an online auction where you list everything. It's the, the new wave out there. And people can go online, they can come down and inspect this stuff, and uh, they bid online, and everything is done uh, through the internet at awesome. this point. 
Great. So I just want to explain to you what the process is that we're moving to now. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Comburis? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. And we pulled AG, correct? Are we pulling AG? Oh. Uh, we're not pulling AG. What we are doing is we, um, are, term we are terminating for convenience the award to Hutton okay. um, due to the um, the bid specs and the bid request of the project may have to be rebid. However, we do, uh, the township and Hutton has reached an agreement whereby Hutton will not be completing the project. So at this point, we would just ask that the governing body approve um, rescinding the approval granted to Hutton. Okay. Is there a motion to uh, approve the rec uh, rescinding? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Comburis. I think there's a question from Councilman. Hold on a second. Yep. Can, can you just explain what it is that, that it, the process that you're talking about, just so I make sure I fully understand it? So a bid was awarded to Hutton Construction to do the sewer replacement at, at Skytop. Uh, during the course of Hutton activating to do the project, uh, they determined and the township determined that Hutton did not want to go forward and do it anymore. Um, and we can have a further discussion about that in executive session if you'd like. Um, and now we need to rescind that approval. Um, however, due to the bid specs and the way the bid was put together, we may need to rebid the project rather than going to the next lowest bidder. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, Councilman Vargo. Um, we we'll do roll call. Roll call, please. Councilman Comburis. Yes. Councilwoman Peterson. Yes. Councilman Vargo. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Yes. Mayor Tanella. Yes. Item nine: approval of bills. Uh, Mayor, there is one more um, resolution that was added late this afternoon. Um, this was due to a request for further reduction of developer agreement performance guarantees and escrows that were posted. Can I see it? Yep. What this is, is it's uh, the development on, on Grove Avenue. What happens is the, when they post sureties with us, both in cash and bond, right. for the on-site improvements. And when you're a small developer, you know, you're cash strapped. So what happens is we allow them to reduce their bond. Not, they don't have to do it all at one time as the workers perform. And you know, this developer came to us and said, look, you know, I'm really having a, a problem you know, with cash flow. We've completed the paving, we completed the lighting. So what we're gonna do, we're doing a partial. We did a piece, I think, at the last meeting for what he completed, and now he completed X amount more. And to make him wait another two weeks uh, might, might be a hardship okay. to him. So what we're doing is we're requesting that we reduce it. We still have I think another two hundred forty something thousand dollars in bond and another twenty eight thousand in cash plus a fifteen thousand dollar contingency left on the project. Because I think what all that's left after this are maybe some as built joints to deal with this. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, request the reduction. Okay. And, and Mr. Tuchet, note in that resolution it says the, the municipal engineer has reviewed it. He's he's and has, he's and, done and the has, review and has agreed. Seeing that the work has been completed and he's certifying it. Okay. okay. Um, is there a motion to approve that resolution? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? And roll call, please. Councilman Comburis? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item 9, approval of bills. Be it resolved that the summary of bills having been duly audited and found correct are hereby ordered paid in the amount of three million six hundred and twenty four thousand two hundred and eighty three dollars and eighty four cents. Just as a note, uh, two point nine million in our county taxes that we had to pay. County, the board of ed, you mean? No. I'm sorry, board of ed, right? Board of ed. Right, right. <laughs> I said, get out. No, no I'm kidding. <laughs> we, we pay them the same amount, though. <laughs> about, three, about $3 million a quarter. <laughs> uh, poor Miss Hartwick. Yeah, humor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Um, is there a motion to approve? Do we do one? Is a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Kuris? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Uh, the meeting is now open to the residents of the township wishing to be heard on any item on or off the agenda concerning township business. Thank you, Ms. Hardwick, for sticking around so uh, late tonight.
Good Appreciate evening. It. Good evening. Um, I just have a few small things. Um, we have leaf pickup starting on our county roads. It actually started in October. Uh, for the township of Cedar Grove, the November collection is November 20th through November 24th. Um, so it's just uh, there. I'm sure you have some notifications on your website already about that. Residents who are on county roads should put their leaves out um, that week. And then they'll also be pick up in December the 18th through the 22nd. Um, coming up this week on Thursday, the Office of Small Business Development for the county is offering a workshop understanding the certification process. Um, this is an opportunity for small businesses to get certified to do business with municipalities and counties in New Jersey. Um, it's taking place in Maplewood from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and more information is available on the county's website uh, for any businesses um, that would like to attend and participate. Um, and of course, it's never too early to start talking about the holidays. Um, ho our Holiday Light Spectacular at Turtleback Zoo will be opening later this month. Um, it's free for um, anybody to attend. We just ask people to bring donations of um, canned and non-perishable foods, coats, um, and toys. Thank you. Ms. Harbour, two things I just want to while you're here. Uh, one, I um, thank you for your report. Um, it, uh, um, you, the, the county had the recent collections in October, uh, hazardous waste and computers, and that's always so well received. And uh, I saw the lines backed up on Fairview. It's so organized in there, and it's, it's a great way for our town and the, the neighboring towns to get rid of unwanted material. And I just want to thank the county executive for always putting that together in such an organized manner. And two, I want to thank you. Uh, you know, as we're getting towards the end of the year, you've been, you know, you've been here. Um, every one of our public meetings this year uh, and your reports are very informative in keeping our residents uh, in the know and I just want to thank you for again I know it's almost nine o'clock and you're still here I appreciate you spending some time with us um, each month and updating us on what's going on in the county and how it's impacting the residents of Cedar Grove so thank you for that appreciate it Mr. Mayor, Mayor. yes Mr. Um, is there any progress or update on the removal of the wellhead behind Alaris? Um, I sent an email update uh, about two weeks ago, I want to say now. Um, it is going to be a lengthier process than maybe initially thought because there are active water lines that run through that area. Um, but the Department of Public Works is reviewing uh, how that removal can take place. Right. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Anybody else from the town um, public question to be heard? Okay. Um, whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meeting Act permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting of the mayor and council in certain circumstances, and whereas the mayor and council of the township of Cedar Grove are of the opinion that such circumstances exist, now therefore be resolved by the mayor and the council of the township of Cedar Grove, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that the public shall be excluded from the discussion of any action on the executive session of the meeting of the mayor and council of November 6, 2017. The general nature of the subject matters to be discussed are uh, Kehavnanian litigation, uh, Coptic church litigation, and Kowal litigation. It is anticipated at this time that the above stated matter will be matters will be made public as soon thereafter as is deemed in the public interest to do so. Uh, this resolution shall take effect immediately. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Um, roll call, please. Councilman Cambiras? Yes. Councilman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Vargo? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. A motion for adjournment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you.